One of the biggest compromises of NPM just happened, and I want to talk about it for a bunch of reasons. One of the reasons being that it's all over now and almost nothing happened. To start, it is important to highlight that the compromise affected all of these packages. Going to the bottom of the list here, you will see some of these packages have hundreds of millions of downloads per week. The one that caught my eye, for example, is the debug package. The reason why I caught my eye is because the debug package is a package with 55,000 dependents, meaning when you download the package, and you resolve their dependency graph, you will pull in this package. Now, what happened to allow this compromise to take place? Well, unfortunately, this gentleman Quicks, uh, Josh Junin, you know, just a regular guy who contributes to NPM packages, received this seemingly inconspicuous email. Hey there, would have said Quicks. As a part of our ongoing commitment to account security, we are requesting that all users update their 2FA credentials. And that, I'm a security guy. That sounds great. Yes, please, please go update your 2FA credentials. Um, but in doing this, you know, you click on the link, you go to some login page. It looks very normal and innocuous and not very scary. But underneath the hood, you will see that this came from not npm.com, but instead npmjs.help, which if you're tired and maybe you're just not reading this too quickly, not paying attention, you know, is not the legitimate npm maintainer. And so because of this, when you log into this page, your credentials get stolen. And ultimately, you know, this kind of thing happens. Now, two quicks is, uh, you know, credit, he went to every repo on GitHub that had issues about this. It saw that there were compromises and, and told the story like, hey, man, I have access and I'm getting emails about all of these packages. Here is the timeline of what happened and, you know, being very transparent and trying to trying to fix this. So the question for a lot of people, I think, is like, how does an NPM package uh, compromise affect an end user, right? Well, one instance of this that I saw happening is, you know, someone found a copy of the chalk repo that had been compromised, right? And this is the chalk index with malware.js because at the time of this recording, the chalk repo has been fixed. And if you're scrolling through this, you don't actually see really anything too scary. You're like, oh, this is like what chalk does. It's a template repo. You have your factory object abstract inter interface for factories, right? All this stuff. But there is this one little line here, a single line, uh, line 11, that if you take it and you go to the raw view of the file, when it you know wraps all the lines together, because this is one single line of JavaScript, you see this. And this, if you're not in the security world, is a heavily obfuscated line of, of JavaScript, right? So you look at these, you see all of these like hex numbers. They're trying to make it so that you, the reader, can't understand the intent of the code by not using English terms or programmer words uh, to, to know what's going on in the code. Now, unfortunately, there are de-obfuscation. So the act of doing this is obfuscation. De-obfuscation is the act of taking this stuff and converting it back to human readable-ish code, right? Now, the de-obfuscators can't like infer the intent of a label for a variable. So it's going to do its best job, not perfect, but it can get it to a more readable state. And again, I didn't do all this reverse engineering right. I read a few articles that told me the intent of this code, but like the deobfuscator did pull all of these strings out of the code. And effectively what's going on inside of this um, malware is it's inserting these things called hooks. The idea of hooking is this very common, uh, in, like it's very common pattern in malware. And again, I've written a very silly, very simple example in C that kind of gets a point across, right? So let's say for example, I wanted to hook malloc. I wanted to have a function that when I call malloc, instead it calls my function does something evil, but impersonates the malloc call, right? Malloc being the, the heap allocator call in C. Um, what you do is you write a function that has the same interface as the original function, and a malloc just takes a size t, and then you call the original function on the inside, and then set that function equal to your fake function. Obviously, you know, labels like this are read-only in C, so you can't do this exactly like this, but this is the idea of a hook. And so what's happening in the JavaScript version of the hook is it's literally replacing all of the APIs in the browser with its own malicious version of the APIs. And what APIs is it hooking? It's hooking window.ethereum, which is the Ethereum, literally the cryptocurrency interface in the browser, as well as the XML HTTP request interfaces, right? So the one for open and the one for send, it's setting its own function to handle these, right? And it's using the dot apply um, functionality in JavaScript, which basically runs the original function with its own arguments, right? Very neat kind of JavaScript hooking tactic here. Now, what it actually does under the hood 
is really interesting for the XML case. All it's doing here is taking any string that looks like it could be a cryptocurrency destination wallet and replacing it with one of the known good wallets, right? And so what this effectively is, is a hash table where they take the, you know, hash, I'm assuming, of the original um, wallet address and then look up one of their attacker controlled addresses and just uh, it re literally replace the contents of the destination address in the wallet with their own address. And yes, of course, today's video is sponsored by me, yours truly. Guys, I honestly believe that if you wanna be a good programmer or a good cybersecurity analyst, you have to know how computers work at the fundamental level. And in my opinion, the best way to learn how the computers work is to learn a language like C or learn a language like assembly. Now on Low Level Academy, I have courses that do just that. In Zero to Hero C programmer, we go through and learn the entire C language. And at the end of the course, you make your own little employee database project. And we've recently added a feature where you can go and as you're making commits to your project on GitHub, it will automatically run tests for you and test to see if you've passed the project. And then eventually, if you complete all the modules in the course, you get this cool little certificate here that if I move my fat head, this QR code can be used to cryptographically verify that it is actually your certificate. And guys, if you put your email address right here on the site, you can get a free three-day C course sent right to you. You'll learn how to write your first couple lines of C to get your feet wet in the world of low-level programming. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Let's keep going. And so by doing this, they're able to intercept the transactions in the browser for any of the following uh, cryptocurrencies, right? You have Ethereum, the, the various Bitcoin uh, versions, Litecoin, all the Solanas, and then I think Bitcoin Cash is what this one stands for. So very interesting stuff. I do want to highlight something very interesting about this attack, by the way. So if you look at the timelines here, right? So this is Quicks saying, hey, I got attacked on 8 September at 1735 Central EST. He then says that it's all resolved, all packages should be back to normal at 2348. So what is that? Quick math, that is eight hours, not even, that is, sorry, public YouTube math, that's six hours of downtime. And, and it's not even downtime in the sense that everyone was compromised. Remember, the whole, like, the way that NPM works is all because they push an update to a package does not mean that you're going to get that update. You have to then go into your package lock and change the version you have or do an NPM update, right, or an NPM install. Like, so what's so funny to me about this is there was probably some giant, like, crypto corporation, like, crypto stealer corporation or government agency behind this hack. They may have spent hundreds of man hours preparing this figure and figuring out who are we going to target? Oh, this guy's a maintainer of all of these repos, right? And then they send him the phishing email with their infrastructure set up to get him to log into their page. And then the entire thing is resolved in six hours. And what's interesting is this is the exact same timeline, generally, I think it was like more like two days, but a similar timeline to the XZ Utils backdoor, which was a similar kind of bug where somebody got socially engineered into giving another actor, Jaya Tan, access to the maintenance of LibLZMA. And they use this to hook the authentication calls in OpenSSH, which would have effectively backdoored all of the calls to authenticate OpenSSH servers, right? So we're seeing this increase in, in supply chain attacks that I think is really interesting, but I think what's really, really cool as well is we're also seeing an increase in user vigilance, right? An increase in how aware people are that this is a thing and also an increase in like responsible disclosure. Like this guy was like, hey, I got pwned, let's figure this out. And it was handled in six hours. Now guys, that being said, obviously one way you can get around this is to use two-factor authentication. I'm not gonna plug my sponsor, but you know who they are. Um, you literally are able to, by the way, if you're a maintainer of NPM, you're able to set it up so that you can use your, uh, your Apple fingerprint scanner, by the way, to make it so that it validates you logging into NPM when you're doing pushes. Why they're using Microsoft Edge on an Apple device, I, I will never understand in this picture, but you can do that. And again, again, guys, 2FA is an easy way to make yourself safer online, so I highly recommend you do that. So while there are a lot of images out like this that say like billions of downloads affected, right? It It's not necessarily true. I don't know how many downloads actually came down with this version of the software. I will say if you are using, pretty much, I would say if you're using any NPM package and you've done development in the last week or so, just go like re-update your code, right? Go re-up, like re-update your, uh, your NPM packages so you're using the right version of the code and you kind of flush out any malicious code that's out there. Um, if you are using any kind of crypto stuff, if you're doing crypto transactions or if you're a crypto trader, I would say go make sure that your wallets are good. Go check to make sure your money is still there, right? 
mistakes. For all we know, it could have been sent off to some one of these random addresses here. And if all else fails, hit the sub button. I apologize for looking disheveled. I have a two-year-old. I apologize. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one. Take care. Goodbye.